Welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk about or focus on optimization. Optimizing your opens and your clicks. So we've already talked about how to formulate the, the perfect subject line and how to formulate the, the body copy and how to cue the click. But let's talk about some proven tricks and tips that can get you more opens even with the best subject line and that can get you more clicks even if you've written the perfect email. I like to call these sneaky little email tricks. So before we, we do that, let's, let's revisit a little fact. You as an email marketer have just three to four seconds to grab your reader's attention and interest them enough to open and read your email, right? Three to four seconds. So think of that as you're scrolling through your phone or as you log into your inbox on your desktop. That is an instant, right? You have to grab someone's attention immediately. You have to stand out from the crowd. You have to differentiate yourself from all the other emails in the inbox. Even if someone is fully indoctrinated and engaged with your brand, that's hard to do. So writing the best email subject line isn't enough. We need to talk about optimizing that open, optimizing that click. So let's start with nine tricks to increase your email open rates. So trick number one, and this isn't as much a trick as a best practice. So it's called timing, right? Timing is everything. And, and really the timing structure is more about avoiding what I call the inbox purge, all right, the inbox purge. And, and, and if you'll think about this, I promise most of you are guilty of doing what, well, the rest of uh, the, the population of the world typically does, or at least those of us who, who have smartphones. I don't know what the other nine people do when they wake up. But the inbox purge typically happens, right, pre 8.30 a.m. in whatever time zone. A lot of the times it's happening uh, between 6 and 8. So that's kind of the inbox purge. And let me, under, let me explain what that means. So for me, my alarm clock is my phone. So after my alarm goes off, like most responsible email marketers uh, and consumers, the first thing I do is open my email and scroll through it. Now, if there are things I want to read, they make it past the inbox purge. But I really ask myself, do I want to be interrupted with this when I get to wherever I'm going, when I get to the office, when I get to the coffee shop? Uh, when I get to the gym or when I get done working out, again, as you can tell, I'm a big workout guy. <laughs> I'm obviously joking. Uh, do I want to be interrupted by this later? So most of the time, if your email hits my inbox right after I wake up, I'm archiving it. I'm deleting it. Unless it's really, really important or I'm really, really interested, I'm not saving that for a known interruption for when I get to the office. Just not going to do it. So. The way to avoid that is don't send emails at that time, right? Don't send emails. Deliver your emails between 8.30 and 10 a.m. or 2 and 3.30 p.m. or 8 p.m. to midnight. Now, those are some great general rules, but as technology and marketing automation uh, improves, you can start to actually cater when emails are delivered based on your subscribers' activity and engagement with your email, right? We'll talk about that a little bit later, and, and a lot of that's uh, technology dependent. So. Number two, call them by name, right? Call them by name. Now, where is important? So it used to be that if you wrote me an email as a broadcast and it said, uh, it was a subject line and I opened it and it said, hey, Richard, for the first couple of years, people actually thought you were writing me a personal email. Now, uh, people know, all right? The cat's out of the bag. People realize that that's nothing more than a a form fill or a merge field, and you're not actually sitting down individually writing emails to your subscribers. However, we are all just vain enough that if our name is in our uh, subject line, we will see it, right? Naturally, it's going to stand out against the, all the other noise. So if you can use personalization, use it in the subject line. That can increase your open rates by as much as 23%. Right now, obviously, anything used uh, too much, law of diminishing returns comes in. But if you can rotate in the use of your prospect's email, or I'm sorry, the use of your prospect's first name in the email subject line, you'll see big opens. Now, what I want you to think about as we're talking about some of these tricks is where would be the best time to use these? Would it be the best time to use that in uh, an engagement, or I'm sorry, in an indoctrination campaign in the, the first few emails you send me? Maybe it might work really, really well. It might do better in the engagement, maybe in the ascension campaign, right? In an ascension campaign, 
Now our relationship has moved down the path of an initial purchase, so it may make a whole lot of sense to use there. Also makes a whole lot of sense in a segmentation campaign. If you're broadcasting your subscriber list, this is a good one to put in your rotation uh, to get an, an additional boost in email open rates. Now here's one that's interesting. Positive in the AM or negative in the PM, right? Which one do you want to use? Psychologically speaking, people typically wake up in a positive mood. Now, if you write a negative email, a negative tone subject line, and it hits my inbox in the morning, even if you avoid the inbox purge, because I'm optimistic about my day, you're gone. I'm not reading it, I'm deleting it, I'm archiving it, maybe I'm even unsubscribing from your list. I want positivity in the morning. If you're going to be negative, right, be negative towards the end of the day. Now, I'll tell you, I say that laughing. If you're gonna be negative in a subject line, it's also nice to come back with a, spot, a positive spin or at least offer a solution for positivity. Don't be a fear monger or don't live in, in negativity, right? Don't do that. Now, that's not to say that negativity won't get you more opens, but think about when to send it. So if you're going to send a, an overtly negative subject line, send it towards the end or later part of the day, maybe the 2.30 to 3, or maybe the 8 to midnight. But don't send it in the morning. Whether your subscribers realize it or not, they want today to be a great day. And because you are coming at them with a different tone than they're hoping to start their day, they immediately push you away. They're gonna immediately repel you. That's not what you want your emails to do, right? You want to engage with them. You want them to open. So if you can speak in the mindset that people are already in, they're going to be more likely to open your email. So be positive in the morning. Heck, try being positive in the afternoon too. But if you're going to be negative, uh, really look at at positioning those negative emails at the end of the day as opposed to the beginning. So be uh, provocative, controversial, or relevant, right? No one wants to read boring emails with dated information. So if you're gonna come out and you're going to, to grab someone's attention, you know, have a controversial headline every now and again, especially if you can spin it back, right? Have a provocative um, kind of in nature subject line or just be relevant. Don't talk about the Apple, the new Apple iPhone that was released two months ago, two months late. You know, the new Apple iPhone is great. No one cares. It's over. You're saying I have old information, right? I have old information. But think back to some of the subject line examples we went through in those case studies. Some of those were provocative. Some of them were controversial or at least sounded controversial, okay? Focus on actually having some personality, standing out in the inbox. Remember, that's the goal here. Use odd or specific numbers. Again, you'll remember this from the examples that I showed in the, uh, in, in the proven email subject lines. If you're rounding up or down, people think you're lying. Be specific. Not only do specific numbers stand out in our, in our minds, they catch our eye, they stand out in our inbox, but if you round up, people think that you're lying. Because rounding isn't lying, but it's kind of bumping up, because most part, if, if we're trying to write email copy, we're not rounding down. Let's be honest, if you're rounding, it's probably rounding up. So while you're not lying, you're not being specific. And really, in rounding up, you're losing open. So if you're using numbers in your subject line, uh, one, tell the truth, right? Use the actual numbers, but two, uh, use specific numbers odd specific numbers. It's gonna increase your email opens every single time. Uh, keep it short, right? Keep it short on your email subject lines. Six to 10 words or 25 characters. If you can do that, you're going to stand out because I'll be able to read most of your subject line, right? I'll be able to read. Now, if you're going to have a longer subject line, this gets to be an art and an art that you should all get good at and proficient at as we move to most emails being open on a tablet or smartphone. And that is, if it's a long email, making sure that what's read is important and sells the story or leaves me wanting more, right? Leaves me wanting more. Today, it's not just the email subject line sells the open. It's, in most cases, the first three to five words of an email subject line sell the open to read the rest of the email subject line for your subscriber to determine if they're willing or not, willing to continue reading your email or not. We're moving to, to mobile 
right? We're moving to tablets. You have to think about the length, but if you can keep it short, then you're good. Use the second subject line, okay? The second subject line. Now, if you're reading your email almost anywhere by now, you have a great uh, resource that most people ignore. In fact, most people don't only ignore it, they botch this completely, completely. You have one subject line that is your actual subject line. Then you have the email description. Now, a lot of uh, email clients default to the first line of your email going in that description. Most people, the first line of their email is, click here to view this email as a web page. That doesn't tell me anything. I don't care. That doesn't give me another reason to open your email. Now, if you can customize what I see in that email description, or at least be intentional about it, it's an additional line of sales copy. It's an additional way for you to say, hey, if I used a curiosity-based subject line, remember we're talking about the types of subject lines earlier, if I used a curiosity-based subject line, maybe I use a proof or a scarcity second subject line. I have a description that shows up before I even open the email that tells me the benefit. So now I have two reasons why I should open the email. The first curiosity-based subject line, did that pique my attention? Did it pique my curiosity? Well, maybe it just enough, not enough to open, but enough to, to reread it a couple of times or, or stop as I'm scanning. Then the second subject line kicks in, right? The second subject line or the email description kicks in and it's benefit driven. It's just enough to tip me over the edge and pre-qualify me to click, but also get me to open. So the use of that second subject line, here it is. So let's, let's take a look at that. Uh, let's look for kind of a good one here. Um, Here's a great one, best buy. Three tech updates for a dream kitchen. Get the kitchen you've always wanted. All right, not bad. Um, let's see, here's a, here's a not a great one, uh, unfortunately. Why digital writers need to know the difference between voice and tone. View this email in your browser. This is an area for me to sell you on why you're gonna, you should open this email if this didn't do it. Right, if this just didn't do it, this is my second chance. And if you give up that second chance, you're giving up sales copy. You're giving up, or you're giving up opens, right? Um, here's one, Broadway in Austin. Right, my wife and I like to go uh, see some shows. Once is dot, dot, dot. So that's a curiosity-based email. And then right here, look at all of this information, all this space they had to tell me why I should open this email. And it says, to view this email as a web page, go here. Share this email, Facebook, Twitter, forward to a friend. Well, that's rather presumptuous of you. I don't even know what it's about. I'm not gonna open it and I'm definitely not gonna share it, right? I'm just not going to do it. Here's another one, this week's top 25. If you have difficulty uh, viewing this message, click here. Now, what are some good examples of this? Okay, what are some good examples? Let's, I don't know, take a look at digital marketer here. The juggernaut method, sales jumped by 30%. 30% sales increase, that's interesting, and it's the juggernaut method, so that's a provocative or evocative name. Let me, let me look at this a little bit. I don't know what it is because it's curiosity-based, so let's come over here. How freak training increased sales by 30% with one simple funnel. Second subject line. Right, I just had a second shot at selling you on why you should open this. As opposed to up here, is this email disp displaying correctly? Uh, maybe, I don't know, right? I don't know. Down here, personal email from, uh, from Ryan Dice, or not personal, but a broadcast email from Ryan Dice. Free gift, how you fascinate, personal ass assessment. Now the second subject line kicks in. My new friend and best-selling author, Sally Hogshead, there's some credibility. Right, there's some expert credibility there. I'm gonna open that. Here's another one down here. Have you seen this yet? We start the email. Hello friend, have you really not watched this video I made for you? Holy crap, no, I missed it. I'm opening this email and I'm opening this email looking for the video, okay? The second subject line can increase your email opens more than just about anything you can do. Right, so I urge you to focus on optimizing that second subject line. What are you saying to people after they read your email uh, subject line? And if it's, if it's view this uh, as a browser or view this as a web page, then you are leaving tons of opens on the table. All right, so now number eight, add symbols to your subject lines to stand out. 
Adding the right symbol to your subject line can increase your open rates by 10 to 15%. So I, I know you've seen this in the inbox, and here's some examples of, of some subject lines, even or symbols we've added, even simple ones. The, the black arrow, the play button, right? The, the pirate skull and crossbones, anything to stand out. Now you have to choose here, are you going to just go with symbols that are, uh, that, that are eye-catching and stand out, or are you going to try to make your symbols relevant? So here's a great resource. Uh, you can come to this site at, at email stuff, emailstuff.org, and you can actually search for the symbols that you're looking for to include in your email. Now for us, when we have uh, flash sales or anything that's scarcity or urgency based, anything that has a deadline, a sale that has a hard and fast stop or end, uh, we use a stopwatch, a stopwatch in the symbol. It, it, it speaks to the urgency or the, the time that's running out. So all we have to do uh, to find that stopwatch is come to the site, search stopwatch. It'll give us that code, right? You'll see after we select it, it's gonna give us the code in several different formats. Now, I'm not technical enough to understand what all these different formats are, but I do know that I can put them into, uh, into the, the email uh, email service provider, the campaign creator, and it will spit out something that looks like a stopwatch, right? It looks like a stopwatch and it increases our email click-through rates. So here's another, uh, here's another resource. If you'll go to emailmarketingtips.de, I can't give this to you. Uh, it's not mine to give out, but it's a fantastic resource and it's worth the opt-in, absolutely worth the opt-in. Uh, I, I like that you pimp your subject lines with symbols. But what this will give you is the symbol, the Unicode, and it'll tell you uh, what does it look like on Apple, what does it look like on desktop, what does it look like on Android, and on some of them where there's nothing, you'll know that uh, there's a good chance that your symbol won't be anything but maybe a blank space. Uh, I'll tell you over here, these are the three most popular and highest response symbols, the heart, the sun, and the umbrella right, the heart, the sun, and the umbrella. So there you go, a adding uh, symbols to your subject lines are a great way to stand out and get uh, higher and uh, higher click-through rates and, and more, I'm sorry, higher opens and ideally uh, more the same click-through rates. Now, number nine, the final one, use your pick or logo. This is another way to stand out in the inbox by leveraging your brand. So you'll see right here, uh, this is a little plugin uh, for Google Plus. Right, a plugin for Gmail with Google Plus. If you are sending emails, which hopefully you are, if you have a Google Plus account, if you don't get one, you need to go in and add the email address of your send from account, your send from address at Digital Marketer. We send emails from support at digitalmarketer.com. So we went to our Google Plus address and we added that address as one of our, uh, one of our addresses in the account. It now enables us to show up in the friends, if someone has friended us there on this plugin on Gmail. Now, what else does it do, right? You'll see here, uh, unroll me. Theirs is starting to show up right here in the actual email. And more importantly, you may have seen inbox by Gmail. Now, when it rolled out, it, it was uh, by invite only, and it was strictly a web app, strictly an app for your phone. Another way to uh, mix email and social media now, here's what you'll notice on your phone, right? If you're, if, you're viewing, uh, if you're viewing your email on inbox by Google, you'll start to see that your profile picture, now this is being pulled from Google+, Plus, is going to show up next to your inbox. If you don't have a profile picture, if you don't have, an, have your logo or your profile picture or your logo or icon or your profile picture, it will start to just assign random letters. Now, I don't know exactly how they do this. I don't know if it's the, the first letter of the brand or what they're doing, but they're pulling in something that's looking just like the alphabet. Now, this is fine if you assume that Google Inbox is going to, to take over and everyone's going to start uh, participating in this social meets uh, email experience only on mobile, but something that Google started to roll out here recently in your regular inbox, in your regular Gmail, a little tab is starting to appear uh, and as they're moving through beta that says, take me to inbox. And when you open inbox on your desktop, here's what you see. Now you'll see that some of the aspects that have shown up in the, uh, in the mobile app are starting to be pulled over and what you'll see over the next 
probably six to 12 months is a merge, uh, a merger of traditional Gmail and inbox. You'll see Google pull some of the social aspects, some of the responsive design, some of the drag and drop, and some of the, um, some of the display aspects from inbox and put them into your regular Gmail. Now for us, Gmail makes up almost 50% of our subscriber base. So optimizing Gmail is very important, especially for opens and clicks. If, um, if the brand is known by Ryan, who is our spokesperson, who is the face of Digital Marketer, then we're almost certainly, and I can tell you definitively, getting a bump by having Ryan's face there. One of the things that I recommend testing for you and we're testing ourselves is, should it be the face of the company or should it be the logo? And what I'll tell you is, right now, it's whoever your customer base uh, recognize, uh, recognizes more. For us currently, it's Ryan. As we continue to transition, uh, hopefully very soon, we'll be able to uh, have the brand recognized more than Ryan. It's starting to plane out. My hope is by, uh, by the end of this year, this won't be Ryan's face, though I love looking at it. It'll be the digital marketer gears. Okay, so now that we've gotten through uh, how to get your email open, in the next video, we're really gonna dive into how to get additional clicks, really optimizing your click-through rates on your emails. So I'll see you in that next video.